أنا يا أخي في الله واسمع منهجي خذ يا أخي في الله بيدي وساعدي سلفية في النهج نهج الأنبياء وجميع أصحاب الرسول محمد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ومغفرته My brothers and sisters How are you guys doing? Manhaj Mondays is back Alhamdulillah If you guys are watching this for the first time Then I want you to go back to the beginning of this series Because this is a series where each lesson connects to the lesson before It's like you're building a building You cannot have the roof without the foundation You cannot have the walls without the foundation You see So each lesson is like a domino effect One knocks off the other You may not understand this lesson If you haven't gone through those previously And like I mentioned We're offering a £500 cash prize To the one who actually gets The best marks for the test At the end of this series Inshallah ta'ala But more of that you'll learn If you go to the first video Without any further ado Let us proceed So today's lesson is all about learning, uh, you know, what is the correct name that me and you need to call ourselves by? We have so many groups. People call themselves Hizb al-Tahrir. People call themselves Ikhwan al-Muslimin. People call themselves Barelvi. People call themselves Diobandi. People call themselves Ash'ari, Maturidi. People even call themselves ISIS, right? Daesh, they call themselves... There's so many different names. So people call themselves Salafi. People call themselves Shi'i. People call themselves Sunni. What is the correct name? Or are all these names correct? Or what is the wrong name? And if it's wrong, how wrong is it? Inshallah wa ta'ala, today we are going to find out the answer to this very question. My beloved brothers and sisters, let us go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, let us find out what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call us? What name did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give to us himself? If you go to Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 78, you will find Allah said, huwa sammakum al-Muslimin min qabl wa fi hadha. Allah said, He is the one, meaning Allah. He is the one, sammakum al-Muslimin. He is the one who gave you all the name Muslimin. He gave you the name Muslim. So we know that the name that Allah gave to us that we should call ourselves by is Muslim. Okay? So that's something that we all agree upon. But now pay attention, my brothers and sisters. The ones who Allah referred to as Muslims, were they the Shia Muslims of today? Were they the, the Hizb al-Tahrid Muslims of today? Were they the uh, Ikhwan al-Muslimin Muslims of today? Uh, which, which one? Of course, the Shia, the Rafida amongst the Shia, you know, the ones who, who actually know what the belief of the Rafida, the Shia are, the ones with the 12 Imams, the ones who actually know what their true religion is and they believe it, for them, they're not even Muslim. But they claim to be Muslim. The point is, which one is the correct one? Which one of these? Was Allah talking to them? When Allah says, Sammakum Muslimin, did he mean these Shia ones, these Hizb al-Tahrir ones, these Barelvi, Sufi, Ash'ari, Maturidi ones? Which ones was Allah talking about? Well, if you ponder upon the context of the ayah, the answer to this will become very clear for you. Because when Allah said, huwa sammakum, Allah said, Allah speaking to someone, right? Allah said, he is the one who named you, all of you people, sammakum. He named you, Muslimin. When this ayah came down, who was the ones that Allah was talking to? Allah was talking to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he was talking to the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. So when Allah said, he has named you Muslims, he's saying he's named the Prophet alayhi Muslim, and he's named the Sahaba who are with him Muslim. Meaning Islam, the correct Islam, the correct understanding of Islam, the one that is called Muslim, the one who follows it which is called Muslim, is the one who follows what the Prophet was upon, and what his companions radiyallahu anhum was upon. In other words, the Prophet was referring to those who are upon the Sunnah as Muslims. Because it is the Sahaba who are upon the Sunnah of the Prophet. And the Prophet who was upon his own Sunnah. And it is this group who are upon the Sunnah of the Prophet 
who Allah said, Sammakum muslimin I have called you, I have named you Muslims. So let's digest that for a second. Allah gave a name Muslim. He gave the name Muslim to the Prophet who is upon his own Sunnah and the Sahaba who are upon the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. In other words, the true pure essence of Islam is only the one who follows the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the one who follows the, the methodology of the Sahaba who are upon that Sunnah. Good. Good, 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 good. Now let's, let's pause for a second. Let's take a step back. So based on this ayah, we have learned who Allah is talking to. He's talking to the ones who are upon the Sunnah. The ones who are upon the Sunnah are called Muslims. Good. So we learned from this ayah, you can call yourself a Muslim or anything else that associates to Islam. Anything else that means Islam in the exact same way Islam or Muslim means Muslim, how it was intended at the time the ayah was revealed, that can be a name for you, or the very word Muslim can be a name for you as well. In other words, Sunni. Sunni, there's nothing wrong with calling yourself a Sunni. Because Sunni actually means Muslim. It means the same thing. Because the ones who Allah called Muslim were Sunnis. And a, a, a thing to further back this up is the statement that Imam Al-Barbahari rahimullah brings in his book Sharh Al-Sunnah. In his Sharh Al-Sunnah, first you have to understand, for you to understand the power of this statement, you have to understand what he was doing in this book. In this book, he brought the belief, the correct belief of the Muslims. The correct belief of the Muslims that is so authentic that it is Proven by ijma, everything that the Sheikh mentioned as a belief of the Muslims, as a belief of the Muslims in this book, he brought it and it is a consensus. No two Muslims ever dispute or disagree. And as you know, Quran, Sunnah, and ijma, consensus, are the things that we can use as proof in our religion. So, what did he say? Imam al Barbahari said, Islam is Sunnah and Sunnah is Islam. They're the same thing. So when Allah called the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Sahaba who were with him Muslims, Islam and Muslim, sorry, Sunni and Muslim mean the exact same thing. Because the one who is a Muslim is the one who is a Sunni. In other words, one who is upon the Sunnah of the Prophet <coughs> alayhi salatu wasalam. The two are synonymous terms. And what further backs this up even more, is that the great noble Sahabi Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, radiallahu anhum he also referred to the Muslims as Ahlu Sunnah. And the reason I tell you it's important to consider what Ibn Abbas said is because Ibn Abbas wasn't just any normal companion. He was the one who the Prophet made dua for and said, Ya, ya Allah, Allahumma faqihu fi deen wa alimhu ta'weel. Oh Allah, teach him the interpretation of the Quran. Is the Prophet's dua ever going to be rejected? No. So when the Prophet said, Oh Allah, teach Ibn Abbas the interpretation of the Quran, does that mean he knows it? He knows it. Because the Allah does not reject the dua of the Prophet. So this very companion who the Prophet made dua for him to understand the Quran, he came and he said that the believers who are going to enter Jannah on the Day of Judgment, they are Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And where did he say this? He said it on the ayah where Allah said, Yawma tabiyaddu wujuh. That on that day, the one whose faces are going to be glowing. The one whose faces are going to be shining. Of course, the ones who are going to be... The reason it's glowing, it's shining, is because they've been saved, forgiven, from, prevented from punishment. They're going to go Jannah. And that's only for the Muslims. Only the Muslims will have that privilege. What did Ibn Abbas... Uh, what, what did Allah say? Their faces are glowing. Ibn Abbas said, the ones whose faces are glowing... And we already know they're Muslims because it's only the Muslims whose faces are going to glow. He said, Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So the name Sunni, the name Sunni was mentioned by this very great noble companion. Does he understand the religion better than me or you? Of course he does. So he understood from the eye, and the Prophet made dua for him to understand that the, one of the names of the Muslims, the ones who are going to be going to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala is Ahlul Sunnah. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is so you can understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, that Sunni is not a bad name. That's a name we're allowed to call ourselves. Why? Because Allah said, He named you Muslim. The 
so that is a proof that you can call yourself Muslim. But because Allah is talking to the people on the Sunnah, and those very people themselves, like Ibn Abbas, use the term Sunni to describe themselves, and the rest of the Muslims who are going to enter Jannah, and the fact that it, Ibn, Imam Barbahari mentions in his book in which he brings consensus, unanimous agreement that Islam is Sunnah and Sunnah is Islam, is also a proof for us, inshallah, to add all of this together, that the word Sunni can also be used to describe a Muslim. So we are allowed to use these two names. That's what we learned so far, right? Alhamdulillah, we're on the same page. Good. But then what about all these other names? What about all these other names that people have? Names, for example, you know, Barelvi. Names, for example, Ash'ari, Maturidi, uh, Jahmi, Qadri, Shi'i, you know, uh, Zaydi. All of these other names that the people have. What do we say about all of these various other names? My beloved brothers and sisters, all of these names are haram. All of these names are haram. And I'm going to give you a principle for you to identify any of these names that are haram. You see, the people of misguidance, the people are from sects that are against Ahl Sunnah, who are from the 72 sects that will be in Jahannam, may Allah protect us and forgive them all and guide them back to the straight path, the path of the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, as it was understood by the Salaf, Salihin, the Sahaba and their students. We pray that that happens for them. But all of these people, when they name themselves to a group, they always name themselves to a random, to, to, to their sheikh, to some human being. They always give themselves the name of their, the human being that they, that they follow. They don't attribute themselves to the Prophet They don't attribute themselves to the Sunnah. They attribute themselves. They, 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 they make themselves known by the name of the one that they follow. For example, Brelvis. They know themselves by the name of who? Ahmed Rada Brelvi. That's their main guy. That's their guy who brought this set together. Ahmed Rada Barelvi. They say we're Barelvi. Look, look, when I say I'm a Sunni, I, so I'm attributing myself to who? The Prophet Ali Sallallahu And Sunni, as we just mentioned, and Islam are the same thing. Sunni Muslim is the same thing. So when I say I'm a Sunni, I'm straight away telling you I'm a Muslim. And specifically what kind? I'm the kind who follows the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in because that's the one, the ones who Allah was talking to when he called them Muslims. When you say I'm Barelvi, we think, no, you're Ahmad, you follow someone, you've not even attributed yourself to the Sunnah. You've attributed yourself to a man who came, Allahu Akbar, 1300, 1200 years after the Prophet Ali The Ash'aris do the same. They say to themselves, we are Ash'aira. Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari. Abu al-Hassan al-Ash'ari is the one that they attribute themselves to. The Maturidis do the same. All of these sects do the exact same. So either they attribute themselves to a human, or they attribute themselves to their belief. Specifically, the element of their belief that's corrupted. For example, those who do not believe in the Qadr, they will call the Qadris. So remember, we, we attribute ourselves to the Sunnah, i.e. the Prophet, and the belief of the Sunnah. So the one we attribute ourselves to is pure, and the belief we attribute ourselves back to is pure. They attribute themselves to human beings who are not pure, and then they attribute themselves to the beliefs that are not pure, the Qadris. The, the, the Shia, they call themselves Rafida. Rafida, it means to turn your back, because they turn their back on uh, Zayd, Rahimullah. Zayd, Rahimullah, they turn their back on him. So they refer to themselves as Rafida because they turn their back on him. Right? So Rafda, the, the action of turning back is what they, they know themselves by. So you will find that the sects always do this. They attribute themselves to other than the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And they attribute themselves to a belief other than the belief of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. So pay attention. Whenever you find a sect that does this, that goes by a name, and the name of that sect is not the, it doesn't attribute itself to the Prophet or his companions, or it doesn't attribute itself to the actual Sunnah, Islam, Quran, Sunnah, but rather some other belief that is unique for them. Straight away, that is a sign 
that is an alama, that is a proof that this is a group that is misguided and from one of the 72 sects that is not saved and will enter into Jahannam. Just their name is a proof straight away because the only name we're allowed to have is Muslim or anything that attributes to Muslims such as Sunnah. The proof of this, I just mentioned to you the overview, the proof of this is the hadith of Harith al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu when he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَنْ دَعَى دَعْوَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْ جُثَى جَهَنَّمِ Anyone who calls himself by the names of Jahiliya, i.e. any name that has nothing to do with Islam, any name that Islam itself didn't give, give that person is in the pit, جُثَى جَهَنَّمِ is in the pit of the hellfire. Now, one man asked the Prophet ﷺ, he's in the pit of hellfire? Where in salah wa sama, even if he prays and he fasts, is he still going to burn in the hellfire? And the Prophet ﷺ said, wa in salah wa sama, even if he prays, even if he fasts, he's still going to be in the hellfire. Just why? Because he gave himself a name other than Muslim or other than something that attributes to Islam, i.e. sunnah. And then the Prophet said, فَدْعُوا بِدَعْوَ اللَّهِ Call yourself by the name that Allah gave you. الَّذِي سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He is the one who gave you the name Muslim, Mu'minin, believers, عباد الله, slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are names that Allah gave you. So call yourself by these names. By these names, my beloved brothers and sisters. Further to show you the seriousness of this affair, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, he came, he, he, look what he said, the very same sahabi was the one the Prophet made dua for. He said, anyone who affirms for himself a newly introduced name, i.e. a name that is not from the religion or doesn't attribute to the religion, then he has taken his neck out from al-Islam. In other words, he means he has abandoned the religion. He doesn't mean he's a kafir here, but it means he's abandoned the religion. And this was narrated by Imam Ibn Batta in his Al-Iban. And by the way, that hadith that I mentioned to you previously, that hadith is narrated in Sunan Al-Tirmidhi. Okay? And of course, Maymun Ibn Mehran, who was from the Salaf al-Salihin, he also said, stay away from everything that is, that is a name other than Islam or something that attributes to Islam. Good. Fantastic. Now, you might ask a very important question, a very pertinent question. And that is, hey, brother Amran, but what about the name Salafi? Salafi, what about the name Salafi? Is that not a name that is also new? Well, first, the name is not new. It was used by those who are upon the methodology of the Salaf very, very early on. But it's a good question. And let us answer it. Number one. We mentioned that the ayah where Allah said, Who are Muslimin? is proof that you can call yourself Muslim. And because Allah was talking to the people who are upon the Sunnah, it also is a proof that anything that, because Allah is talking to them and attributing Islam to them and they are on the Sunnah, then because Islam and Sunnah are connected and because they are together and they are meaning the same thing, it's permissible to call yourself Sunnah. And the examples I gave you was from Abdullah ibn Abbas and Imam al Burbahari to further back that claim up. Good. Well, if I say Islam is Sunnah and Sunnah is Islam, then the way that you and I came to know of the Sunnah is through the Salaf. The Salaf is the Sahaba. The Salaf, if I say I follow the Salaf, I, I say I follow Sahaba. Because when the ayah came down, Allah was talking to the Prophet ﷺ, and he was talking to the Sahaba at the same time. So the Sahaba are upon the Sunnah. And they are the Salaf. The Sahaba. And that's why I said you guys have to watch the previous videos if you haven't already watched. Or if you want to refresh your memory. Go to the video called Salafi versus Sunni. Salafi versus Sunni. This whole point I'm making, will the penny will just drop and it will all fall into place the moment you realize when, when you watch that video. Because in that video, what did I prove? I proved that Sunni and Salafi means the same thing. If I say Muslim means Sunni, and Sunni means Muslim, well, Salafi means Sunni, and Sunni means Salafi, and that means Salafi means Muslim. They, it, it means the exact same thing. It means the exact same thing. And let's just say for argument's sake, if you still want to push the button and say, no, 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 even though you don't have a basis for this, but let's just say you still want to push the button and say, no, 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 then the word Salafi, 
doesn't it attribute to names of men who came after the way these sects do. Nor does it attribute to beliefs that are unique to these sects that the Prophet or the Sahaba never had. Because the Sahaba never had this. Neither did any of the other uh, uh, you know, uh, Sahaba or the Salaf have these beliefs. When we say Salaf, who are we attributing to? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiyallahu anhum. Radiyallahu anhum. Did the Prophet not say, Alaykum bi sunnati, upon you is my sunnah, wa sunnati al khulafa ir rashidin al mahdiin, and the sunnah of the four rightly guided khulafa? So when I say Salafi, who, 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 who are at the top of the list of the Salaf? The top of the list of the Salaf are these four men Abu Bakr, Uthman, Umar, Uthman Ali, radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. So when I say I'm Salafi, I'm attributing myself to these men, the ones who the Prophet told me follow. Not like you attributing to Ikhwan al-Muslimin, Hizb al-Tahrir, Hassan, Ahmad Radha, Barilvi, you know, and all these names. No. Nor am I attributing myself to a belief that is unique to you. It's, when I say Salafi, is that a new belief? Is that a new belief like the Qadris? Like the Rafid? Is that a new belief? No. Salafi means the belief of the Sahaba. It literally, it literally means the belief of the Sahaba. Which was the Sunnah, as I proved to you in the video called Salafi versus Sunni. So it, we're not attributing ourselves to anything other than what is Islam. And because it's permissible to call yourself Sunni, and Sunni means Muslim, Salafi also means Muslim. It means Sunni, it all means the exact same thing. So my brothers and sisters, that is the proof that you're allowed to call yourself a Salafi. But question, do you have to call yourself a Salafi? No, you don't. You don't have to call yourself a Salafi. But is it good to call yourself a Salafi? Yeah, it is. The reason I say this is because a lot of people will come to you and say, listen, brother, there's so many sects, man. And all these names are confusing. I'm going to call myself a Muslim. Well, I'll say, good, okay, Muslim. But can you deny that there are so many different people that call themselves Muslim? The Qadianis, who by consensus are disbelievers. The Qadianis, the Ahmadis, by consensus, they're disbelievers. The ones who believe in a new prophet. Yeah? Ghulam uh, Mirza Ahmed, they believe in it. The Ahmadis, Qadiani, same thing. Say they also call themselves Muslims. So are you the same as them? I say, no, I'm not. But you're Muslim, they're Muslim. They call, sorry, they're not Muslim, but they call themselves Muslim. So how do I know the difference? I said, the Shia, they curse Abu Bakr. They call themselves Muslim. So are you the Shia? The Barilvis, they go to the graves and worship the graves. They must call themselves Muslim. So are you like them? Right? The. Uh, the, uh, the Ash'aris or the Maturidis and the rest of these Mutakallimeen they don't believe Allah can they don't have a basis to believe Allah can hear or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks they don't have a basis for these things that Allah loves that Allah can get angry they don't believe Allah's names and attributes they worship a Lord who is basically mute and dead and nothing about him that's what they worship they worship a Lord who basically has no characteristics no nothing are you the same as them? they say no I'm not so then we say, brother, we, we need to have something that shows us what your belief is. Because surely you cannot be like them. He'll say, okay, I'll call myself a Sunni Muslim. I'll call myself a Sunni Muslim. He'll say, okay, but Akhi, do you understand that the Diobandi call himself Sunni? The Bravian Sufi call himself Sunni? So, Salaf you call himself Sunni, so which one are you? You see, you, you will not, and, and, and their beliefs are so different. That some beliefs are kufr and some are bid'ah. And some are just... Whoo. We need to know which one, which one. And that's why the word Salafi comes into place. And it's a harmless word because it only means exactly what... Already the definition of Sunnah, Sunni, and definition of Muslim, that's exactly what the word Salafi means. It just makes it easy to make your belief clear and to know what the other person is upon. You may say, I don't want to call myself a Salafi still though. But you have to follow the path of the Salaf. That's something that you can't get out of. And I've given you many evidences for that as we have gone before. So inshallah wa ta'ala to summarize and to conclude my beloved brothers and sisters. Allah is the one who said, who, who, uh, who He's the one who named you Muslim. He named the Prophet and the Sahaba Muslim. So you want to follow them? Salafi is those who fought. Salafi is one who, Sahaba. Sahaba who, the ones who Allah says, Samakum Muslim. I named you Sahaba, you people Muslim. And Sahaba were from there. And Sahaba are Salafi. When you say I'm Salafi, you're following the very people who Allah called Muslim. In other words, Muslim. And we mentioned that uh, Sahaba and Sunni, uh, sorry, uh, Islam and Sunni mean the exact same thing. Attributing yourself to the Salaf 
all it means is that you're attributing yourself to the people of the truth and the pure religion, the one that Allah called Islam. That's what it means. And Salafiya is Sunnah and Sunnah is Islam. Attributing yourself to the Salaf, it does not divide. It actually causes you to become united. What causes you, you can only unite upon the Haqq. What causes you to divide is all these different beliefs and logics and emotions and views and people. We can unite. It's easy to unite upon the belief of the Salaf, i.e. the Sahaba. Because that's objective. But these Shia are not going to unite with these Ash'aris. Because for them, they have Abul Hasan Ash'ari and the rest of the Imams that came after that. They believe what they believed. And they believe what they believe. They're going to contradict. There's no ground for them. That's disunity. These other names are disunity. But for us, no, we have something objective that there's evidence for that we can all attribute ourselves to this name and we can unite. So the word Salafiyah doesn't disunite. It actually unites. And number four, attributing yourself to these groups and these sects this is wrong and it is a sign of disunity and it is a clear cut sign of misguidance and dalal and it causes a person person to lead and exit from the haq and enter into one of the sects who will not be um, uh, from those who make it to jannah on the day of judgment they will go to the hellfire so my beloved brothers and sisters be warned of calling yourself these names and be warned of thinking, just, just to ask yourself a question, but like, sometimes this is enough, it shocks me. Just by a person saying, you know what, I follow, I'm a Brilvi. Straight away that should be a sign. Nah man, this is wrong. Who, who Brilvi? Ahmed al who are you? Where is he from? Let's just say for argument's sake, even if you believe he was a righteous man and he wasn't. Even if you believe he was. Is the Prophet ﷺ, Sahab, better than them? You're going to name yourself by a man other than And there's so much clear cut The hadith I mentioned to you Saying you cannot call yourself by any of these other names When I look at all of these sects Look at all of these groups Don't look at the ones who call themselves Sunni Because everyone calls themselves Sunni But look at all of these groups Just ponder What light is powerful Ponder Every single group The only one Just by its name Straight away Refers you back to the pure understanding of Islam is Salafiyya. Well, I just think Sunnah Sahaba. That's, that's who we follow. Sunnah Sahaba. Every other sect says, no, a guy who came 20 years, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years, 100 years, 56 years, or a group like Ikhwan and Muslim that came recently. Everything is talking about these new things. Or these beliefs that are fringe, far fetched beliefs that are unique and just known to this one particular group that is rare and that, that is a new belief. Does, is that not enough to show you the corruption and misguidance of all of these sects? Just their name is a proof. Just their name is a proof that they're misguided. How can a sect be correct if it's named? Think about it. 73 sects. Only one will make it to Jannah. Just by its name, it's told you that I'm opposing the Sunnah of the Prophet. Because what did the Prophet say? The one that will be saved. Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. The only sect that will be saved is the one who is upon what I am upon and what my companions are upon. Billahi alaykum, I ask you by Allah. When the Prophet said, the one who is saved, the one who is upon what I am upon and what my companions are upon. Is that not exactly what Salafiyah is? Sahaba, follow them. Who are upon what the Prophet is upon. And understand the Sunnah according to them, the Sahaba. What other sect can... It, in the, their name, in just their name, in just their name, which other sect can encompass that entire meaning of ma ana alihi wa ashabi, what I am upon and what my companions are upon, which will take you to paradise? What other sect can do that? Rather, if you look, for example, Shia, straight away, there's no Sahaba. You, you believe the Sahaba or Kufar, automatically you're out. Because the Prophet said, I'm upon my Sahaba upon. Automatically you're out of the discussion. Because you don't even believe the Sahaba or Muslims. So you're not going to walk their path. So we move you to the side. The Brilvis. You, you follow a man who, who... Allah didn't... The Prophet didn't say, Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi wa ahmad rada barilvi. He didn't say, What I'm upon, what my Sahaba wa ahmad rada barilvi is upon. No. Or what ma ana alayhi wa ashabi wa abu, wa abu Hassan al-Ash'ari. No, he didn't say these things. Well, he didn't say these things. He just said him and his sahaba. So no, just by the name you can see, whoo, this is something not what the Prophet mentioned. And the only one who's named by the name Salafiyah. Salafi. The only ones who have that name is us. 
Even you look at like ISIS and whatever, they gave themselves the name Daesh, ISIS, they gave themselves that name. That's a name for them. You are known by that name, that's your group, that's your firqa, that's your sect. That's your sect. They're not Salafi. They're not Salafi. So I hope that sheds some light, okay? Call yourself Muslim or that which attributes and associates to Islam, i.e. Sunnah and Salafiyya. Anything else that does not attribute itself to Sunnah and Salafiyya, honestly put it to the side. And I really would urge you guys, please revise the other lessons because there's been a gap since the previous lesson and you'll really understand that lesson more, those lessons more, if you have watched them and come to this lesson after it. Especially the lesson called Sunni versus Salafi. And also the lesson that shows you the different names of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah. Anyways, Manhaj Monday is going to continue the following Monday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.